Hi there! In today's tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to crochet this beautiful striped scarf. It's very simple, easy, beginner friendly. We're going to use two simple stitches and some self-striping yarn. Hello! If you're new here, I'm Laisha from With Love Laisha. I'm a self-taught crochet artist and designer and I make tutorials that are simple and clear and help ease some of the frustrations of learning crochet online. If that's your jam, go ahead and hit that subscribe button below. And if you enjoy this tutorial, then give it a thumbs up. Now let's get into it! To make this scarf, you're going to need some yarn, and I've used Red Heart Soft Essentials Stripes. This is linen stripe, and I just love how beautifully the uh, colors came through. It's like almost color blocked, so I really liked this yarn for this. It has a little bit of a sheen on it, too. I don't know if you could see that in the intro. Uh, this is a level 5 bulky weight yarn. That's right here on the back of the packaging. You could pretty much use any yarn you like for this project and you can make it any width or length you want. Uh, these are just, uh, this is just the yarn that I decided to use and my width for this was 6.75 inches and my length or my height was 61 inches. So go ahead and make it, you know, the, the width and the height or length, whatever you want to call it, uh, that you like and it's very customizable. You can also use any yarn you want for this. If you're going to go with this bulky weight yarn or with a bulky weight yarn, I would go with a L size hook and that is a 8mm hook because I like the stitches being a little bit looser. You can see the pattern really nicely because we do want these gaps to come through. So I uh, don't use a hook that's going to make your stitches very tight. The a few other things you're going to need is a tape measure to measure your project as you go along, some scissors to cut your yarn, um, a darning needle or a yarn needle. We're going to use this to sew in any ends at the end of the project and a stitch marker. This is in case you want to put your project down, you don't want it to unravel. These are fantastic little things to use. And that's about it. You can get all these materials at um, pretty much any craft store. Now we're going to start with our starting chain or foundation chain and the only thing you need to keep in mind when you make this pattern is that you always need to have an even number of chains in your foundation chain. So I'm going to do a small sample with you and just to help you get the hang of the pattern and then you can go ahead and make it any width and length that you like. So the first thing we need is a slip knot. I like to do mine like this. I take my hook, lay the yarn over the hook bring the tail over the longer piece of yarn, yarn over and pull through. There's many ways to do a slip knot. That's how I like to do mine. Now I'm going to crochet an even number of chains. So I think I'll do about 16 should be good. So we're just yarning over and pulling through the loop, yarning over and pulling through the loop, yarning over and pulling through that loop. And you want to keep your hands nice and relaxed, but you want to have a firm grip on your hook. You're not clenching it though, you will end up with chains that are too tight. So go ahead and crochet your foundation chain, make it as many chains as you would like, make sure you have an even number, and I will see you at the end of my 16. Okay, I've got my 16 chains here. This is what my foundation chain looks like. Now we're going to put a single crochet in every chain going all the way down. So we're going to start in the second chain from the hook. This is the first chain from the hook. That's where your hook is coming out of. We're going to go into the second and you can count by counting these loops at the top. So this is the fourth one, fifth one, sixth one. So we're going into the second and I'm just inserting just like that, right under the top loop and pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through. Now I find that working with a size 5 yarn, a little bit bulkier weight, is easier when you're learning how to crochet and you're trying to see your stitches and understand what everything looks like. That's just me. Um, try it out, see if that's the case for you as well thinner yarns, finer yarns, they make it harder to see. Dark yarns make it harder to see, so stick with uh, medium tone yarns, kind of like the one I'm using. So once again, I'm going in, pulling up a loop, yarn over, and pull through. 
So go ahead and do that all the way down and I will see you at the last chain. here at my last chain and I'm going to insert and my last chain always ends up being too loose once I put the actual stitch into it so I like to just insert the tip of my hook pull up a loop and then yarn over and pull through both loops and that helps keep the uh, chain a little bit tighter now we're going to move on to row two so this was row one and at the end of row one, we have 15 stitches. So I started with an even number of stitches on my foundation chain because we want to end up with an odd number of stitches after we've put in our first row. So 15 is perfect. And you can count your stitches by tilting your work a little bit towards you. And do you see those Vs? These Vs are the tops of your stitches. So you count these one, two, three, four, five, six. It's just a little tip if you have trouble counting your stitches. Now, before we move on to row two, we're gonna chain one and turn. So I didn't do anything fancy. My hook is like this. I'm just turning my work to the back. And now we're gonna work down this row. For row two, we're going to start on the herringbone half double crochet. And it's just a variation of the regular half double crochet. I love this stitch. So we've chained and we've turned. Now we're going to locate our first stitch because that was always the most confusing part for me. So see this knot, this loop where the hook is coming out from? We're not going in there. We're not going to touch that guy. We're going to go into the V next to it. And from the side, it's this. It's the very first large gap that you can enter or uh, insert your hook into. So it's this, and from the top, it looks like that. So before we insert, we're going to yarn over, insert into that space we just found, so not here, it's this one. We get that V over our hook. And then we're going to pull up a loop and we're going to pull straight through that next loop on our hook. That leaves us with two loops. Now we're going to yarn over and pull through both loops. Let me show you that one more time. This is a beginner friendly video, so I am going a little bit slower. Um, if I'm going too slow, you can always fast forward if you feel that you've understood. If I'm going too fast, you can rewind. So once again, we're going to yarn over and we're going in this space here. We're going to yarn over again and pull up a loop. We end up with three loops on our hook. We're going to pull straight through that first loop. We end up with two loops on our hook going to yarn over and pull through both those loops. That's a herringbone half double crochet. Now we're going to chain one and we're chaining one because we're skipping this next stitch. So see where you just placed a stitch? We're not going in here. We're going in here into our third stitch. And from the side, you can see this V next to the stitch you placed. We're not going into that V, we're going into the one next to it. So every time we skip a stitch, we need to chain one to account for that stitch. So now we're going to do another herringbone half double crochet, yarn over, insert into that stitch I just showed you, the V, pull up a loop, and pull straight through the next loop on your hook, yarn over, and pull through the remaining two loops. 
and then we chain one. Once again, we're gonna skip that next stitch. So from the side, it looks like this. You're here, we're skipping this, we're going here into the sky. So make sure after you've done your herringbone half double crochet, you chain one. Yarn over, go into the stitch we located, pull up a loop, pull straight through the next loop on your hook, yarn over and pull through both loops. So you're gonna do that, follow that pattern all the way down, place a herringbone half double crochet, then chain one, skip the next stitch, so skip the next V you see, go into the one after that from the side, you're here, you're skipping this, going to the next one and place another herringbone half double crochet and then chain one, continue until you get to your last stitch. When you get to the end you're going to skip a stitch and you should be going into your very last stitch your last stitch looks like this if you tilt your work so you have these two v's left i'm going to go into this v right here so yarn over insert get the v over the hook pull up a loop pull through the first loop yarn over and pull through both loops now for row three we're still going to continue with our herringbone half double crochet, but we're gonna place our stitches a little differently. So we've chained one and we've turned. So we're working on the back of the last row and see these gaps that we have? These are the chains that we placed when we skipped a stitch underneath, we created these gaps. So we're gonna work into those gaps. So first we're going to place a herringbone half double crochet in the first stitch and that's from the side you, this is your post your very edge it's the large space that you can insert your hook into right next to that so this very first v not the one where your hook is coming out from the one next to that we're going to go in there so yarn over and insert get that first v over your hook Pull up a loop, pull through that first loop, yarn over and pull through both loops. And that is completing your herringbone half double crochet. Now we're going to place another herringbone half double crochet, but we're going to go into this large space. So we're not getting any V's over our hook this time. We're just going into the space. So yarn over, go into that large space and just complete the herringbone half double crochet like we have been. Now we have this post, this bar. For that bar, we're going to chain one because we're going to skip it. We're gonna go into the next space. This was the first one we worked in. We're skipping this bar. We're going into this next space. So yarn over and place your herringbone half double crochet in that space. Once again, we have a bar now. For that bar, because that is a stitch, that is a stitch, it's this stitch. So we need to chain one because we're skipping it. So every time we skip a stitch, we're chaining one. Now we have this next gap here. We're going to yarn over, work into that gap. So I'm just inserting, not going into any stitches, clean into the gap. Pull up a loop and complete your herringbone half double crochet. And that's it, you're gonna do that all the way down. So when you come to a bar, you're going to chain one after your herringbone half double crochet, skip that bar, and work into the next space. 
So do that all the way down and I'll meet you at the last couple stitches. So I'm here and I have just worked into my second to last space. I have this bar for that. I have chained one because I'm not working in there. And now I have this next space. So we're going to place a herringbone half double crochet in the very last large space. And then our last stitch, your last stitch is that last V you see. It's right next to the large space. It's this. We're going to work a herringbone half double crochet in there. So we're not chaining one after this herringbone half double crochet. We're directly working a, another herringbone half double crochet. So we started with two herringbone half double crochets in a row and we're ending with two half herringbone half double crochets in a row. And then go ahead and chain one, turn, and that's basically it. That's the pattern you're going to follow. We have these large gaps, these switch, stitch spaces, and we're going to work into those. So we are starting with a herringbone half double crochet. So I've chained one. I'm yarning over. I have these two Vs. I'm going to work a herringbone half double crochet into that very first V, just like we have been. We always place a herringbone half double crochet into that first V. Now next to this V, we have another V and we have another bar. We're going to skip that bar because we skipped the bars, right? So we're going to chain one and now we have this space and we want to work into that space. So place a herringbone half double crochet in that space. So you always start with a herringbone half double crochet. Every row starts with a herringbone half double crochet. And then depending on whether you have a space or another bar next to it, you go from there. If you have a bar, we're going to skip it and chain one. If you have a space, you're going to work a herringbone half double crochet into that space. So I'm chaining one because I have a bar, yarn over, work into that next space. Chain one for the next bar, which is here. So again, do that all the way down and I will work the next row with you. When we get to the last two stitches, we have a bar and we have our last stitch. So for the bar, we have to skip it. So we're going to chain one. We're going to yarn over and just go into the very last V. Place your herringbone half double crochet, chain one, and turn. This is what the pattern looks like. This is what it's gonna be all the way down the length of your scarf. So we're back to the pattern that we worked for row three. We're going to do the same thing. And we always, as I mentioned, start with a herringbone half double crochet. So we're going to do that. You can count on that for every row that you're going to start with a herringbone half double crochet. You're going to go into that very first V, the very first stitch that you see. Now we have a gap. We've come on a gap. So what do we do? We work into it. So we're not going to chain one. When you see a gap next to your first stitch, make sure you don't chain one. We're only chaining one when we come upon a bar. So we're going to work two herringbone half double crochets in a row. We're going to work directly into that with a second herringbone half double crochet. So complete a herringbone half double crochet as you have been. Now we've come upon a bar. So now we chain one. And that's your pattern all the way down 
this row. We have this space in, in the end, and we work our herringbone half double crochet into that space. And then we go and we work another herringbone half double crochet into our last V. Because we always start and end with a herringbone half double crochet. Now, once again, you're going to chain one because we always chain one and turn. You can count on that. And now we're starting a row. So we always start with a herringbone half double crochet. You can count on that too. So I'm just going in the same way we have been. And now we've come upon a bar. So we need to chain one and skip it. Then we work into the space. And then the pattern is the same. You do the same thing all the way down. So I'm gonna work down this row really quickly. The only confusing parts I think are just starting the rows because the rows start a little differently. So I just wanna make sure that I get that down with you. Now the last couple of stitches I've come to a bar. I worked into this space. So I wanna make sure that I do chain one because I'm at a bar. And these la this is what the last two stitches look like. This is the bar and this is my last V. So we're skipping this guy. So I'm chaining one for him. And then now we're going to yarn over and go into that last V as we have been. And work your herringbone half double crochet. Chain one and turn. I believe for this pattern, you could need anywhere from three to four skeins of yarn. So you are going to have to add in new yarn uh, a few times. So I'll show you how to do it in the middle of the row and then I'll show you how to do it at the end of the row. So first thing, you don't want to crochet until you have this much yarn left, just this small amount. You want to give yourself a bit of a tail. It makes it easier to hide the ends later um, and you know you won't end up in a problem where your stuff is unraveling. We start our stitch pull up a loop, wait until we have two loops left. Then we grab the new ball, the new yarn, lay it over your hook and hold on to it. I like to hold on to it like this. You can hold on to it like this, however you're comfortable. You wanna get it snug on that hook so it's easier to pull through the loops and then just pull through the two loops. And then to tighten up the stitch, pull on the old ball, the strand from your old ball. And while you're holding here, pull down on the new yarn. And then you just continue crocheting with your new ball of yarn. And these tails, you can actually just catch them in your stitches as you go along. So we do need to chain one. So we're gonna chain one. And this is why you give yourself a good amount of tail. You don't want it coming undone as you're chaining one. And then just pull these guys against your work as you work down. So now we're going to move on and place our herringbone half double crochet. And these tails will just get worked into the work. Or you can leave them out and you can come back and weave them in later. So I'm just crocheting on like normal and I'm just catching the tails in my work. That's one way of doing it. And when I was starting out, I found that to be the easiest. Just lay the tails against my work and go on. So I'm at the end of my row here and I've already chained one because I do have a post and I'm going to go into my last stitch now. And you only want to change at the end of the row if you have enough yarn, you have a good long tail. If your tail is short by the time you get to the end of the row, you wanna make sure that you do chain, uh, change, yarn, <laughs> change yarns further back in your row. So you always wanna have this much, at least of a tail, a good long tail. So now we're going to go into our stitch to do the herringbone half double crochet as we have been, pull up a loop, 
It's the same thing as when you change in the middle of a row. You want to pull straight through until you have two loops on your hook and that's when you're going to grab the new ball of yarn. Place it over your hook with the tail away from you and pull down on it so it's nice and snug. I like to hold it like this. You can hold it like this however you're comfortable and then pull through those two loops and to tighten the stitch you pull down on your old yarn. Make sure your tail doesn't get too short. You can just pull on it if it does. And then you're going to tug on your new ball, both strands, the tail and the working yarn to tighten up that loop. And now we're going to chain one to turn. And when you do that, you want to make sure that you are holding on to your tail with your work as you do that. You can hold up here if you're more comfortable. You're not doing anything different. It's just how you would normally hold your work and turn, but you just want to make sure that you catch your tail in there as you're holding it. Because if you don't, when you try to chain one, you could end up pulling your tail loose. The tail kind of comes up. So to prevent that, it's better to hold on to your tail as you're chaining one. And then you turn. And as you work your stitch and you continue working the new yarn into your work, it will become nice and secure. It's not going to come undone. And then you can either work your tail into the work or you can just come back and sew them later. So I decided I would show you the magic dot method myself just in case that works for you and it clicks for you. Um, so when you use the magic knot method, you want to make sure that you have a long tail. So, and I'll show you why in a second. You don't want to do this when you have a very short tail. You need even a longer tail than you would if you were using the other method I showed you. So I have about this much. And now I'm going to grab my new ball of yarn. My new ball of yarn is in uh, gray. So I have this cream color which is coming from my work and I have this gray and I hope you can see the two clearly. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this little tail of the gray, which is the new ball of yarn, and I'm going to just knot it around itself, but I'm going to catch the old ball or the old yarn in that knot. So I'm just going to pass it under. So I'm just, I want to make a knot with this. I'm just passing it underneath the old yarn. This is the new one. And I'm just going to make a knot around itself and tighten that knot. Now I'm going to take the piece that's coming from my work, this cream piece, and I'm going to make a knot around itself. So I'm not doing anything special, just making a knot. But once again, I want to catch the new yarn, this gray yarn, in that knot. So all I'm going to do, I'm just going to pass it under. And I'm going to make a knot. We're not making a knot on the gray, just around the cream itself. So you can see that I've knotted the white yarn or the cream yarn around itself, but the gray one got caught in it in that knot. And here I've knotted the gray one around itself, but the white one is caught in it. I hope that makes sense so far. Now I'm going to pull on the white one, the white yarn from the right side of the knot. So from the part closest to my work, and I'm going to grab the gray yarn closest to the ball. So on the left side of the knot right here. We're not touching this part between the two knots. We're pulling on the outsides of the knots and we're just going to pull so the two knots come together. You can tighten those knots once again by grabbing the white tail 
and the white yarn. Give it a good yank once again. Grab the gray tail and the gray yarn. Give that a good yank and once again pull from the outsides of the knot. And that's it. You have made a magic knot. Now all you need to do is snip the tails and you come pretty close. And this is the part that scares me with the magic knot. You come pretty close to, the, to your knot because the idea is that you don't want the tail to show. You want it to be a nice seamless look. So you can get pretty close to the knot, but just make sure you don't cut the actual knot. So I'm getting pretty close to it, but I'm not cutting the actual knot. And then you want to pull once again to tighten. Now when we crochet in our work, that knot is going to disappear seamlessly into the project. And the closer you cut to that knot, the more hidden those little pieces of yarn become. So let's say I want to add in a new ball of yarn, but that ball is starting on a gray. Well, that means that I'm not going to get my complete color block section of white because it's going to randomly suddenly in the middle change to gray. So what you can do to make sure that you continue with the white yarn is just cut off this gray. and just snip it off right there and add in the ball of yarn from the white. So that will continue your white blocked section. And another tip when you're changing yarns, you're adding in a new yarn, is if you start your first yarn from the center, if you're one of those that likes to pull from the center of the yarn, when you change your neck to your next ball of yarn, again, pull from the center. So pull from the inside, don't use from the outside. You're more likely to end up with the colors changing in the same order if you start all your yarns from the same place. So if you start from the outside, then start all your new balls from the outside. That's just something I've noticed. Um, and let me know if that works for you, if you notice the same thing. So I'm going to show you how to put in your last row. And I'm just doing a swatch with you, so this is this is what I've got, but pretend that I've got my 61 inches done, or however many inches you're going for. So I'm going to put in a row of single crochets because we started with a row of single crochets. So like we have been, I'm still going to chain one and turn. And then I'm going to just put one single crochet in every stitch going all the way across. So we're not skipping stitches or chaining. We are putting a stitch in every stitch all the way across. So that was my first one. This is my second. And when we get to a space, we're going to go into the space as we have been and place a single crochet in there. When we come to a post, we're going to go into the top of the post. We're not skipping over them for this last row. Go into the center of the space, but go into the post, get that V over your hook, and do that all the way across until you get to the end. And once you get to your last stitch, so this is my last stitch, I'm going in there, you're ready 
to knot off, but you want to make sure that you have the same number of stitches that you started with. So it's a good idea to count your stitches at the end of every row so you don't miss a stitch or add an extra. Realize that you did that 10 rows, 15 rows back and then have to go and open up your work. That is very painful. I just had to do that, so trust me, it's not fun. So count your stitches at the end of every row. I started with 15 stitches and I'm ending with 15 stitches. Once you've added in your last row of single crochet, you're ready to knot off and weave in your ends. So once you finish your last stitch, you're going to yarn over and pull up a loop. Pull up a pretty nice long loop because we want a nice long tail to weave in. So I like to make sure that I go all the way across my project. Cut at the top. And it would be helpful if you had scissors that your yarn actually fit. So I'm just cutting at the top of my loop. And now I'm going to pull from my skein, I'm going to pull that yarn and that's just going to pull out the correct tail. And then you just tighten the knot. We are going to leave in our ends. So I'm going to show you on my starting tail here to give you an example. So we're going to lay the tail over the eye end of the needle Hold it snug and you want to make sure that you have a needle with a pretty big eye on it if you're using big yarn. So I just I pulled it really nice and snug against the edge of that eye and now I'm going to slide it into the eye and that helps you not have to struggle with the end of the yarn. You get in pretty quickly. Now you're ready to work this tail into your project. So for this pattern, it's probably easier to work down, but you can totally go across too if you want, whatever is easiest for you. You just wanna slide your needle in between the stitches, in between the strands of yarn. So if you're getting resistance, you're probably splitting a strand of yarn if you just adjust a little bit so it moves nice and easily you want to go about an inch or two and you can do small bits at a time if you have trouble pulling your tail through just tug your yarn you just want to make sure that your work is hidden on both sides when you're pulling if you're having trouble getting the tail free figure out which of these two strands frees your tail and pull that that will get your tail through. So for me it was this top one and my tail just comes down so once you've gone about an inch or two a couple inches would probably be better so make sure you have a nice long tail we're just going to go over one single strand of yarn and that's going to act as an anchor for us to go back the way we came. I like to work back toward the edge so when I cut my tail, it's not showing. So when you go ahead and you snip, snip close to the edge, I like to tug the tail a little bit and then cut. Make sure not to cut your stitches. And the reason I tug it a little bit is because when I adjust it, it gets nice and hidden in there. So you have a nice clean look. All your yarn changes are hidden in your project. No tails showing, you would go and if you did not hide your tails into your work, then you would do that for all the loose tails, the same way that we just did it for this. If you work them in or you use the magic knot, you don't have to worry about it. You just need to do your starting and ending tail. And that's it. You should end up with something that looks like this.
That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Give it a thumbs up if you did. And if you make these scars, be sure to tag me at WaithLovelacia on Facebook or Instagram. If you get stuck or you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them in the comments section. I'm always here to help. And thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe before you go and keep crocheting with love and patience. Until next time.